Shtiggy and Reign of the Old Ones is an emotional roller coaster of a game. It starts off strong as hell, gets even stronger, and then comes crashing down towards the end. To put it in vulgar terms, it's like an edging session with no climax. But let me back up a bit. In case you're wondering, Stygian is a classic style CRPG set in the world of the Cthulhu mythos. For those who don't know what that is, it's the fictional world that is the setting for the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. Without going super into detail, the basic gist of the setting is that the universe is inhabited by a variety of aliens, interdimensional beings, and other supernatural entities that either have no real regard for humanity or are actively malevolent towards us. At least mostly. There's some inconsistencies here and there, but that's the IMDB synopsis. So with the intro out of the way, I have a lot to say about this game, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the thing with the logo. Now before I get really into it, I want to talk a bit about my personal history with Lovecraft's writings. I used to be a huge fan of his work, but over the years I've sort of outgrown it. I know that's kind of a weird way to put it, and I don't mean that I look down on it now, or even dislike it, but the cynicism and pessimism of the setting just doesn't really appeal to me as a 27 year old, the same way it did when I was 19. I still have a big ass tome of his stories on my bookshelf, and the Call of Cthulhu RPG is still on my desk, but it's kind of the same relationship that my dad has with his old heavy metal albums. Occasionally I'll read one of his stories for nostalgia's sake, but that's just not really the headspace I'm in anymore. The reason I say all that is to give some context for what I have to say about this game. If you look at the Steam page for it, you'll see that it currently has a score of mixed, which generally translates to it's dog shit, but it has some rabid fans. In this case, though, it really is a mixed bag of a game. It has a lot going for it, especially if you're a fan of Lovecraft. Even if you're not, and you're just looking for a good RPG or horror game, it ticks a lot of boxes. The first thing I want to talk about is the character creation. This is that real shit right here. None of that hyper bare bones, customize your face and then fuck off on your adventure type shit. You actually create your character's backstory by combining together options from three main categories. The first is your character's age, which is self-explanatory. Are they young, middle-aged, or old enough to remember what UMDs were? Second is your character's background. These are basically classes, and there's a good variety of them, all pulled from character archetypes that Lovecraft frequently made use of in his stories. Each class also has three subclasses, which further alter your stats and abilities. Lastly is your character's worldview, their system of thought, and how they make sense of all the fucked up things they see throughout the game. This character creation system is badass, and allows the player a huge amount of flexibility to create some very unique characters. Maybe you want to play as a Christian mystic, maybe a mobster that has an interest in the dark arts, a police detective who wants to apply the scientific method to law enforcement, or a cynical scientist who's given up on making discoveries and instead just wants to make money selling off patents. I'm a big fan of Humphrey Bogart, so I made an investigator who's a traumatized ex-cop, and for worldview I picked Esoteric because out of these it's the one that's the closest to me in real life. The next great thing in this game that I want to highlight is the presentation. This game is visually beautiful. It has a great hand-drawn art style that's an incredible visualization of the locations and beings that Lovecraft wrote about. Complementing the visuals is a god-tier soundscape, consisting of excellent audio design that's ominous as hell. There's also the soundtrack, which is playing in the background, which is also great. The jazz track that plays when you're in the bar is a banger, and the ambience of the streets combines with the other two things I mentioned to help convey a world that is decaying and diseased at a fundamental level. Next is the story and dialogue, which is, yet again, incredible. The writers for the game do a great job of capturing the tone and spirit of Howie P.L.'s style, while also adding in some touches that keep it unique, like a much more diverse cast of characters than was typically present in his stories, as well as the inclusion of swearing in much more informal language. On to the actual narrative itself, the setup of the story is that one day an event known as the Black Day occurred. The specifics are never revealed, but the gist of it is that somehow the entire city of Arkham, and yes, that's where Arkham Asylum gets its name from, was ripped from the earth and transported to some kind of dark hellscape. Completely cut off from the rest of humanity, and also not even sure if there still was a rest of humanity, societal order in the town collapsed, and it was taken over by two competing factions, the remnants of the town's mafia family and the contractually obligated deranged cult of Cthulhu worshippers. Where your character fits into this is that about a year after the Black Day, you begin having strange dreams where you're contacted by someone called the Dismal Man, who hints that he may know of a way to free Arkham from its current predicament. He beckons you to the Miskatonic University, and you begin the journey to try and unravel the mystery of who he is and what happened to the town. One neat touch about the game that I like is that it presents you with a similar save the world scenario as most other RPGs, but paints such a gloomy picture of its setting that it raises the question of what's even left to be saved. You're never given a concrete answer as to what, if anything, happened to the rest of the planet, and the surviving denizens of Arkham that you encounter run the gamut from completely insane to irredeemably corrupt. You don't even know for sure what the Dismal Man exactly has in store for you. You just kind of follow your leads and hope for the best, much like a Lovecraft protagonist. You progress through the story the same way as any other 
another RPG through quests and character interaction, and in a nice touch, interacting with others in this game goes about the same way as it does for me IRL. Okay, he doesn't want to speak. She doesn't want to speak. He doesn't want to speak. Does anyone want to fucking talk to me? Thank you. Jokes aside, the last thing that this game really nails is the way it integrates Lovecraft stories into the game's world and narrative. A lot of games that pay homage to a specific source material tend to just haphazardly drop references every chance they get, but this game goes out of its way to form a cohesive world, something that Lovecraft himself never even really accomplished. Stories like The Terrible Old Man and The Statement of Randolph Carter are included as things that the player just kind of stumbles on, and the game does a good job of not making it explicit which story it's referencing initially, before dropping a hint that reveals to you which one you're dealing with. It's pretty awesome. Now, After all that glowing praise, you're probably wondering why I said I understand the mixed rating. Well, this game has three main issues, one that I actually didn't have that much of a problem with, and two that I had a huge problem with. The first problem that a lot of people have with the game is its combat system. The common complaint is that it's clunky and lacks variety, which is a statement that I don't entirely disagree with, I just didn't really care all that much personally. The combat is what you'd expect from most CRPGs, it's turn-based and uses an initiative system to determine the order of turns for characters on the battlefield. It's not the worst system ever, but it definitely does lack the depth possessed by other games in the genre. Most of the enemies in the game are fairly tanky, and a lot of fights mostly just become a matter of whittling away at a specific unit's health before moving on to the next one. A lot of the spells in the game are pretty ineffective. It's got some cool stuff, like doing rear attacks to cause more damage, and of course having to manage both your health and sanity meters, meaning you effectively have to deal with two life bars. The combat isn't bad in my opinion, but I've definitely seen better. I, what? You dickhead? You shot me? I'm paying you money and you shot me? Are you fucking with me right now? Now for the two things I really disliked. Quick warning, these both have to do with the end game, so if you have any interest in the game, I'll just go ahead and say that the last section of the game is garbage and the ending is shit. If you've already beaten the game, or just don't care about spoilers, carry on. Towards the end of the game, you find out that in order to get to the Miskatonic University, you need to go through an area of the city called the Blasted Street. This part of the city has been contaminated by the color out of space, so you need both a hazmat suit to keep from being poisoned to death, and a spell which you obtain from the Dreamlands that allows you to sneak past those who have been mutated by the effects of the color, in theory. This entire section is awesome visually and atmospherically, but horrible from a game design standpoint. The first big problem is that it foregoes the open-ended design of the earlier parts of the game and is extremely linear. There's only one side quest here, and you mostly just walk down a series of streets trying to avoid... whatever the fuck these things are supposed to be. The other problem is that if you don't have a very specific type of build for this section, the game fucks you hardcore. This is a problem that a lot of other RPGs have run into over the years. Some other examples I can think of are System Shock 2 and Bloodlines, but this might be the most egregious example I've seen. If you don't have your party completely built out for combat, this area is brutal, but that's not even the worst of it. At the end of the street, you encounter the color itself as a boss fight, and oh my god, this shit was torture. This boss fight lowered my sanity meter in real life. You have to dig the meteor out from all this fucking dirt it's under for some reason. All these whatever the fucks are constantly spawning in and taking like 8 turns each to kill. Plus the color is constantly mind fucking your entire party, which means if you didn't get everyone fucked up on drugs beforehand, then like half your group goes insane. The only way I was able to beat this boss was to down like 20 bottles of whiskey and spend half the battle snorting coke and shooting up heroin. I had like 8 addictions by the time it was over, but at least the fucking rock was dead and I could continue on with the game. The torture's not over yet, because then you get transported to the Elder Things homeworld and have to constantly evade hordes of Migos that are borderline impossible to kill. Just one Migo earlier in the game kicked my ass, but four? What kind of fucking crack was the dev team smoking when they made this shit? Especially because after all the shit I had to go through just to get here, I was pretty much completely out of ammo, health, and drugs. It was so bad that any time they caught me and I got into a battle, I just said fuck it and reloaded a save, which is something that I normally never do in these types of games. The last major flaw is the ending. I'm not exaggerating when I say this might be the worst ending I've ever seen in a video game. It makes Halo 2's ending look like closure. It's literally a cutscene that says you've reached the second half of the game, and then the credits start rolling. You even still have two main quests left in your log. From what I could gather, what happened is that the devs did actually have a whole other half of the game plan, but then the money dried up and they just had to get the thing out regardless of whether or not it was actually finished. Both of these problems sting even worse because visually and atmospherically the last section is amazing. In proper Lovecraft fashion, your character starts to go insane and reality starts to basically distort all around them and it's awesome. The HUD changes, the dialogue system breaks, and there's a section in the witch house which is just fucking incredible. 
Too bad that playing it is about as fun as having to act out Bangkok during a game of charades. It's even worse because the dudes who made this game are clearly both extremely talented and extremely passionate. It really hurts to see what is legitimately an amazing game get brought down so far by these two issues. You know what I wish had happened? The game is already so similar to the Call of Cthulhu RPG that I wonder what would have happened if the license had gone to this game instead of some weird walking simulator. Maybe then they could have had the funds to actually finish the game. As it is right now, it's probably one of the, if not the best Lovecraftian games ever made. It just sucks that it has such glaring flaws. I really can't get over that ending, man. Like, imagine if I just abruptly ended the video mid-monologue and didn't actually have, like, a closing statement or anything like that. Hey guys, if you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks. It means a whole lot. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all your standard YouTube outro stuff. And uh, other than that, I will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>